Welcome back to Face the State. I'm Ariana Bennett. Thank you for joining us. Well, in the last segment, we heard about common mental illnesses and how they can really affect people's lives in major ways. But mental illness on a large scale also has a major impact on our society's well-being, our economy, and on our safety. I'm back with Dr. Molinas now to discuss this part of the issue. Dr. Molinas, thank you once again for your time. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. Okay, so there really has been a fair amount of um, public attention put on um, getting more mental health treatment uh, for people nationally. Um, what, just as a baseline, let's start with um, what is available right now for people um, in the public sphere. Well, it varies from community to community. Um, here in northern Nevada, um, well, let's say in Nevada in general, actually throughout the country, there's a shortage of psychiatrists. Uh, there, there's, uh, in Nevada, I think it's a little more acute than other states. Um, so if it gets to that point where you're needing a medication, needing a psychiatric evaluation, it can be, uh, sometimes it can be challenging to find, to find that or to find it in a timely manner. You know, we have some psychiatrists in private practice, uh, some uh, clinics around town. Um, we have pretty good public mental health services. Uh, and then as far as therapy, uh, you know, there are therapists around. Uh, I think the biggest problem for people is paying for these things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most people have insurance now. Uh, public or private, but finding a therapist or a psychiatrist that'll take your insurance can be is a struggle for a lot of people. And uh, there's not an easy way to do it. There's not cent generally centralized ways to do it. You've just got to ask around and call and check with your insurance company, look things up. And it's a, it's a, that's work in itself, unfortunately, which then delays people getting the help they need. At a time when people really shouldn't have to be dealing with something yes. on top of what they're already dealing with. So how, how big would you say the need is um, for more mental health care um, in our community than, than what is currently supplied? Is it a pretty big gap? Yes, there, there, are, there are gaps. Um, for example, uh, if you take the, the, the people with the most ill people that are, uh, maybe need to go into the hospital, well, they, uh, a lot of them have to wait in emergency rooms for days until there's a bed. Um, it's even more acute in Las Vegas uh, where there's not even enough uh, beds for, for people with private insurance. Here it's more of a problem with people who, uh, who don't have uh, adequate insurance and are waiting for a public bed. Uh, there's a wait. So that's, that's a big problem. That, uh, that our community faces. And at the other end, people, after they've had treatment, that maybe need uh, help uh, with a place to live. Uh, we have very limited resources in our community, so that's a big gap. Um, like I said, just enough providers, um, even an adequate insurance. So most of us have insurance now, but it's maybe not adequate to get uh, or affordable to get the services that you need, or the medications that you need, the amount of therapy that you need. It's very limited. So ideally, so say we were crafting a perfect system, re reworking what we have. Um, what, what would you say needs to be put in place to help the people who need to be helped and get them the treatment they need? Well, it would be nice if there were kind of centralized ways of people to get referrals, to quickly get to, get that get some help. Not have to be searching for themselves and making many, many calls, waiting for callbacks, waiting to be seen. If, if there were more centralized ways to find out who's, who can see you when, you know, what it's going to cost or, or what's on your insurance, excuse me, um, I think that would help. Okay. Take away you know, there's already stigma that people are already resistant to going. If we can make it easier for them to get there, I think that'd be a great first step. Now, the worrisome thing about this, I think, for a lot of people is that while the huge majority of people with some kind of mental illness are not dangerous in any way, except maybe in some cases to themselves, um, not dangerous, dangerous to society, a few will be. And if they're not being seen, 
you what happens. Um, at what point does mental illness become dangerous, and, and how do you know? What do you look for? Well, it's it's hard to predict. You can't you can't do it just based on a diagnosis uh, because it's such a small percentage of any particular diagnosis or problem that are actually uh, going to become violent. Past violence is a is the best predictor of future violence. So some, when somebody has shown that they have that sort of problem, you know, they 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 should be a focus of help. They need the help the most. Again, identifying people, making it, making mental health available to people, I think is the best way to prevent those kind of problems. Right. Um, so risk factors like previous violence. Um, I know drug abuse is up there. Um, so sometimes certain age range and gender more prevalent with men, young men in particular. I think that's true. Do we yes. know why? Well. I, I'm not certain. Yeah, hard, hard to say. Yeah. Um, okay, so how how do you treat that? Say you have, say, say a parent is looking at their kid saying, he's got some anger, some violent tendencies, I'm concerned. What What do you do for someone like that? Well, what I tell parents, when it gets to the point where you're concerned for your safety, for your child's safety, for the community safety. You really think it's gone past a point where it's going to calm down on its own or the help that your loved one is getting is working. Then you need to get them more evaluation. You know, you can always take a person to the emergency room or to a psychiatric hospital to be evaluated. And if they're not, it's not safe, then, then things can be done. Or you can always call the police, and the police can actually um, take somebody to be evaluated, even if they don't want to go. So, you know, if it gets to that point, there are professionals that will evaluate it. And again, the, I think the, uh, the bottom line is you've got to ask yourself is it, you know, is there a real concern for safety here? For instance, if you have a, a child, a loved one who uh, is thinking about killing themselves, uh, and I've seen these situations, uh, you know, thousands of them over the years. And what I'll tell the family is, okay, if you can keep an eye on them, if you feel safe, they're talking to you, you know what's going on with them, okay, then you can watch them and they don't have to go in the hospital and they can take their medication or wait for their appointment to, to work on it. But if, it, if you become uncomfortable, no, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know that it's going to be safe. You're really afraid something might, bad might happen that's the point where then you take them for professional evaluation, okay. emergency evaluation. All right. Well, we have about a minute and a half left, um, and I'd like to use it. If you have advice for someone who um, is maybe suffering themselves or knows someone who might be suffering and isn't seeking treatment, what advice do you, would you like to give? Well, again, we've talked about how it's, it can be hard to get help. And that can be very discouraging to people. They try, and there's a, it's expensive, or there's a wait, or they don't know who to call. They get some, uh, turned down when they ask for help at first. You want to keep trying. The help is there. We have treatments. Um, these things can get better, maybe not on their own. There, there are professionals that can help. But you have to persist. Uh, you know, I encourage you to persist. Dr. Molinas, thank you so much for your time. I My sure pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that is it for this episode of Face the State. But for more information on all of this or to see past episodes, just head to our website, gtvn.com. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you next week.